Alright, hey guys. Today we are going to be replacing, well soon we're going to be replacing this beat up screen. We got another screen right here from eBay. Uh, screen digitizer. It's not the LCD. It's just the physical screen. This one looks like the LCD is good. The display turns on. Uh, it just it's hard to touch the actual items on the screen. So we should be good just replacing this. Um, pretty simple. Doesn't take long. Oh yeah, and screen protector. I don't know if we're gonna have time to put it on in this video, but I'm also gonna put one on after I do it. Usually do it on all screens. We replace the screen on now. So here we go. Uh, what we need is a tweaker tool set. You just need the Phillips. I think this is a triple zero Phillips. Something to pry with. I have a couple other pry pieces right here. Um, and that's mainly to get the housing off of the actual screen itself. Damn allergies. This screen's beat up. Actually, this whole casing's beat up. This is also, I forgot to say, a next book. Ten point one serial number is going to be NXW one zero Q C three two G. So, all right, here we go. We are going to take the housing off of the screen. There's just a bunch of clips between the housing and the screen all the way around. I usually find the weakest point to start, unless there's more cracks. This is always the hardest part, too. I always say to never use a screwdriver to do this, a flathead to do this. But, you know what, I always end up doing it. I can't hate, but don't blame me if you, uh, break something. Is that my phone? Okay. And then go all the way around, you're gonna pry. Like I said, don't use a flat hood screwdriver. I'm not leading by example right now. If you do, just realize you're gonna screw some stuff up. I've done it to a bunch of them. This is a little uh, pry thing, a little pry tool I got with a, a screen one time and it was very useful. It was like free kit included. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to use it. I use the hell out of it. I don't use the other screws drivers that it comes with. What is she playing? Around this, this is where it connects to the keyboard. Usually pretty hard to get them off. This one, this housing is actually broke around that. So this one should be fairly easy to get off. So we got to get all the way down to the LCD from the back. Here's the back. Uh, if you just had to get that back hatch off, you're pretty much done. Go ahead and put it back on. Uh, from here, you could replace speakers. 
uh, you have speakers. You could replace the port where uh, the LCD connects to the keyboard. If that's defective, you could replace that ribbon right here. Uh, you could replace the batteries from right here if you needed to. Everything is right here. This is a super easy computer to work on um, with basic knowledge, I think. So, easy, easy, right? Keep going. We are going to take, make sure we have our data ribbons out. The data ribbons right here. So you have this one that is going, I believe it's in the new screen. I'm wrong. I don't know what it's for. It's just something. But you got to take that data, data connection off. Um, there's a bunch of screws around the outside and like I said the speakers have to come off too. So data connection right there. Let's get the data connection for the screen. Keep your tape, don't lose your tape. Right here, there's a sticker on the bottom side. If it's really hard to get this off, get a heat gun or a blow dryer would be your best bet. Here's Jeremiah trying to get into the view of the camera. You want to say hi? You want to say hi so bad, huh? Hi. You got to come over here. Hi. <laughs> He's still not in view. <clears throat> but uh, we got that one off. Under this here, uh, how or uh, casing, this cement stuff feels like there's a bunch of screws that have retainers for the LCD screen. Also, very important <clears throat> on here, there's magnets where the base connects to the uh, keyboard, these magnets they'll come out real easy. See how there's the red lines? Make sure that everything goes back into the right order or they won't connect to the base easy, okay? Okay. I just knocked the screws out. Hopefully I didn't knock any on the floor. The speaker has to come off. I don't remember if this one has to come off or not, but it's easy. The less stuff you have to take off, the better we are in my book. The better off we are. You could really just take this off, but my luck, I'll forget it. So I'm just going to put it off to the side right there. Right here is, it looks like the headphone jack or auxiliary jack. like we have to disconnect the data connection right here maybe we'll, oh no that's for the camera that'll come up too so if you had to replace the camera the camera would just come out right here we're gonna have to get it off the housing anyways so here's the camera you got the little data cable to it uh, if you had to replace the camera just Get the part and put it on right there. Easy peasy. Right, Cal? Yeah. Right. Probably forgetting something. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Down here, there's a clip that holds all this in right here. There we go. Screws, screws, screws. Got it, got it, got it. At this time, your magnets are going to want to come out. If you do have any glue, actually this one has more glue than the last one did. Make sure that your uh, magnets, when they come off, go in the same order. It's really important. Remember how the red lines were placed on your factory uh, screen? Make sure they get onto the new one. Get back. You're going to mess with the light. Here's an actual little clip. There is a data connection right here. Ooh, move your hand. All right. Now you want to be in the camera really bad? Yeah. There we go. So this is the whole computer piece. The actual computer disconnected from the screen. This is the LCD. If your LCD was bad, this would have to be replaced too. Um, like I said, this LCD is good. So no need to do that. For me. Get our magnets placed. They keep grabbing the screws. I just noticed that there's north and south on these. It says N, S, N, S. So you get your magnets right on your uh, north and south magnetism. Pretty interesting. On these uh, little ones, the, the screw is different. So it makes it's different from the outer housing. Make sure you don't get them mixed up. I lost two retainers on the last screen I did, but hey, it's still working, so. Mm -hmm. It's still Alright, so all the retainers are up. Make sure your screws, the little screws are with your retainers so they don't get uh, mixed up with the longer ones. 
the LCD is going to come right out uh, of that housing. This screen is the new one. You got to make sure everything is replaced same exact orientation of the screen. Um, and no wind around you. What we're going to do, let's get this LCD out. LCD screen is out. This one actually has a bunch of shit on the screen. Wash your glass, your LCD, super carefully. Watch me break this on camera right now. Uh, if you have cotton balls, the big cotton balls, that would be the best thing to use in this case. You want this old CD to be super clean. The cracks are just the glass that's broke. It's absorbing into it. It's not though. Don't move your need this time. You need to get, make sure all the dust is off. You'll be able to see it between uh, the two glasses. So it looks like crap if you don't get all the dust out. Especially if somebody's paying you to do this. So we get <clears throat> all the dust off. Make sure that your LCD, especially after you clean it like that, goes in the same way that you took it out. So right now is the time to be very clean. Hopefully I got all the dust out. You would be able to see it when we put this back on. It's kind of tacky. Doesn't help that the air conditioner just kicked on too when uh, you're trying to worry about being dust free. <laughs> When you put these on, you want to put them to German torque specs. You might ask what German torque specs are. Good and tight. So just make sure that they're in good and tight. You don't want to over torque them. A little bit of snug, that's it. Why are you oddly putting your arm off? I don't know. I'm <laughs> stretching. Man, look at my chubby arm.
Go lay down on the couch, babe. Why? Because you're tired. I'm you just look weird just laying here at the table. It's not funny, is it? Mm -hmm. Guess that's it with those. Got all the retainers on. Got our magnets in right. We got to put our data connection that goes to the LCD back. Preferably black, black. Back on right. This is two-sided tape. I'm not quite sure why this is taped on here, but make sure you get it on there. See, there was a retainer under here when I took it off, and now there's not one there. So it's somewhere else on here, but it's doing its job. I did that last time, and I didn't have a complaint. I do this for my kids, so I don't really give a sh crap. As long as it works. If your uh, tablet has the problem of nothing coming up on the LCD, what the hell happened?
And last but not least, don't forget this ribbon right here. I believe we had to use the heat gun to get this off last time. So we got the heat gun. Can we get this other glass off? Perfect. Just getting this ribbon put in right. down. Go ahead and start putting the screws in the housing. Same thing, these are going to be barely tight at all. So if you drop your iPad, uh, iPad, this is an iPad. If you drop your next book and the LCD goes out, or like my kids, one of them, the, uh, the LCD would just stop working a lot. Uh, what I come to find out on these and realize is that this ribbon right here comes out a lot. And this one will come out a lot. I usually put a lot more tape than this on the, uh, on that one. But that's only one of them out of three.
at this point you could turn it back on. Make sure you have everything right before you uh, put this back on, but you're going balls out and we're just going to do it. The back casing just clicks right on all the way around if you have it on right. So this would be a moment of truth. And look at that. So it's going to load up. Make sure that the screen will orientate what I'm touching. there you could see well I'm not sure if you could see but at this time you'll be able to see all your buttons are working and you are done so from here what we're gonna do is install the screen protector how do you know it's a screen protector because it says screen protector We gotta be super dust free about this situation too. Off, get all everything off. You want nothing on on the screen. I wipe until all the alcohol is evaporated. Then use the other side of the uh, paper to get all the streaks off. Hopefully I can speed this up when I do the editing on the video for you guys. 
this is what I do to every single one of these when I do this. So we had a nice clean screen with no dust on it. Hopefully, I don't see any scratches, I don't see anything on it. It's a brand new screen. Hopefully you're staying tuned for this whole thing. I made this little makeshift squeegee. And we're trying to stay dust free. And when we put this screen on, I start at one side. Squeeze all the air out as I go. I'm probably getting dust on it with my fingers, so I'm holding it with my left hand. Get all the air pockets out as you go. Don't allow any air to stay under the protector. Even if you have to go back a little bit to get that air out and go forward again, do so now. Usually down towards the end is where I get most of my uh, dust and everything. Hopefully it doesn't work that way for you, but... Got a couple of air pockets. Sometimes they work themselves out. Sometimes they just last forever in there. If you have a vacuum press or sealer, now would be the time to use it. Uh, to suck this screen on. Maybe I'll make one of those someday. We'll see. Go around the edges, make sure all the edges are nice and have made contact around the camera. Everything. After you're all set, pull off the covering and you have a screen protector on there. This one does have some air pockets under it, but it'll make it last a lot longer, especially with it being the kid's computer. That's it. That's a new screen installed. Um, and screen protector. Like, subscribe, share. See you on the next one.